All right, guys, jacked up on caffeine, ready to go. Let's do this. This part is gonna be fast, not just because I just drank a whole can of yerba mate, but because we need to quickly build out the sparse pyro setup. So, Dopnet, making this from scratch. Sparse pyro solver. We also need a smoke object that's sparse, like that. Volume source. That goes to this input. We'll say, bring the first context geometry in. And with that, we can also go to our preset right here and say that we want source smoke to get us started. So that's density, right now temperature, and velocity. However, because we're using sparse, our whole fuel and temperature analogy kind of goes out the window because the sparse solver wants to use flame for combustion. So we need to go back up here and change our sourcing real quick. So instead of temperature and fuel, we're going to take one of these guys and turn that into flame and then turn the other guy off. We'll rely on the combustion itself to drive the temperature where this is happening. So we don't need to source in extra temperature from here. And we'll do the same thing for the Sourceify subnet as well. So we have flame right there. These guys are turned off. Okay, let's cache that to disk and see what happens. And it's a good thing that I double checked because if we middle mouse, we still have fuel coming along. What I found is that we need to actually completely detach this entire network right here because then otherwise it just takes the VDB from polygons and brings it through the merge along there. Uh, so I did that for both the subnet and over here as well. Let's try that again. And now as we can see, we have flame, density, and velocity that's coming along with the combustion components. So that's great. For the dopnet, let's say that this is going to be our combustion source. And that is again going to be density, velocity, and flame. Okay, what about our ground density though? We can make a separate source for that. And with the ground density, I'm going to say second context geometry and also bring in density and turn density into temperature as well. So we can do that. Again, taking that density field and adding temperature. So those two guys come together with our smoke object and let's see what that gives us right away. Also, both of these guys need to enlarge fields to contain sources. So ma make sure that that is checked on as well. So we go through 30 hits and we have something like this. All right, we're off and rolling. Great, looks beautiful so far. Let's go ahead and also bring in some collision geometry. And with the collision geometry, this is where things get a little bit weird with the sparse solver. You don't actually source in collision geometry with the volume source in the collision input. In other words, if I went here and I was using volume-based collisions and I said, okay, collision, do that preset. So we need collision and we need collision vel. If I did that and I brought it into the merge right there, nothing would work, nothing would happen. Why? I don't know. It really should work right there because you're sourcing in those volumes. Instead, you have to go through the forces or the advection, but probably the forces is the best idea. Again, I'm not entirely sure why it's that way, but as of right now, that's how you got to do it. So going back up here, we need to bring in our terrain and turn that into a collision volume. And so I don't think we've done that with our terrain yet. Uh, just in case we haven't, let's make that from scratch. So object merge, go through, find our combined geo islands, Kaliz polys out, right here. We'll say VDB from polygons. And actually before that happens, make sure that we set down a normal like this. And we need two things. The distance VDB is going to be collision. And we also need to capture that normal data down here under the surface attributes. So we say vertex normal, that becomes collision val. Let's plug that into the third input right there. 
we'll say our volume source needs to look at the third context geometry. Be sure to uncheck the enlarge fields to contain sources. We don't want our field to expand over the entire terrain. That's not good in this situation. So turn that off and also be sure that we're sourcing in the collision vel volume for the target field of collision vel right there. Once we have that, we need to then go to our smoke object, check on collision and double check to make sure that everything is showing up properly. If we go to frame 30, you should start seeing geometry like this show up. And if you don't, then it's, then that means it's not reading this source properly. So just be sure that you always double check your collisions because they can get kind of sneaky if you don't. But anyway, that does it for the collision component for right now. Let's go ahead and also think about perhaps some settings and get this running with some basic settings. Uh, let's go to our dotnet and add one more substep. Again, two substeps is usually necessary for fast moving simulations, at least two. Um, so with this combustion right here, we have density, uh, velocity, and flame. Let's go to our pyro solver and look at our cooling rate. Turn that down to 0.25 on the temperature. Let's also keep our buoyancy at the defaults for right now. Turn on this advection reflection to single project. That'll add a bit of extra quality to everything. For the flame, we want to have a lifespan of, let's say, maybe about one second. Also, let's have our flame emit smoke, emit temperature, and also emit expansion or divergence or pressure, same thing. We'll start with the defaults on that, and let's also take our dissipation down to 0.1 so that we're not getting rid of those values too quickly. Once we have that, this should greatly alter our simulation. So let's see what this does. All right, and we have this. Now, I can't really tell what this is doing based on the viewport, so let's actually go out of here, do a DOP import fields, and we're going to bring in everything that's relevant here in the DOP net. So bring over that DOP network. Let's use the pyro preset right there. So we'll bring in density, we'll have vel. Eventually we will include rest and rest two. Uh, we don't really need temperature though. Uh, I'm not going to use that for the actual shading of the flame. We don't need heat. What we actually need here is probably the flame field, and that's about it. And we will also add color uh, towards the end as well. Uh, so let's just keep all of that for the time being. Let's also convert all of this to VDBs. So convert to VDBs right there. Let's also merge our vectors uh, fields right here. We want one vector three field. Right now we have three floats, so we can use a vector merge, VDB vector merge. So now we have just one vel field instead of three. And one last thing to clean up some of this data. If we create a primitive SOP, we can go over to volumes, VDB, and we can turn this into 16-bit float data. That will get rid of the memory right here. So we have 70 megabytes versus 70.51, not huge. As a matter of fact, I think we might be exporting this as 16 bit, it looks like. So yeah, you can compress these fields right here. You can do so as well with the primitive if you want, but uh, yeah, that's just good practice anyway. Also, another good practice is to use the VDB activate to ironically deactivate any unnecessary pixels. Uh, so in this case, if there's extra voxels that aren't necessary, it'll trim those off. Anyway, once we have that, we can use a pyro bake volume and we can kind of see what this is doing more easily. So let's go turn it to something around there. Maybe turn up the density a little bit and voila, we have this beautiful pyro plume. Okay. That pretty much does it for our basic sparse setup. In the next video, let's take this further by adjusting some forces and some sources.